Sickbird wants to know, is the iFlight Zing 2 2506 1500 kV motor a good choice for an 8S build? Sickbird, uh, the the kV is perfect. Uh, for a f You didn't tell me your prop size, though. For a 5-inch prop, 2506 is overkill. It's not bad. It's not like, oh, ah, especially because the additional weight of the 2506 motor is going to be somewhat offset by the 8S 1500 kV having more power. Like one of, it seems like one of the whole points of 8S for me is that you can have a heavier quad without noticing the weight quite as much. So, um, what, uh, so I think if that's the motor you choose to go with, it's not a bad idea. If you're doing six inch props, that motor is perfect. Five and a half inch, that motor is pretty good. Five inch, it's a little overkill, but still fine. Okay. Fortune wants to know, is a cap on the pigtail less good than a cap directly on the pads? Yes, but it's better than nothing. And sometimes that's all you can do. Um, Super Deluxe. Super Deluxe. Where's Super Deluxe's question? Hang on. Clear that. What does that mean, Super Deluxe? Oh my God, didn't sell out. He laughed at me and said the internet is crazy. Thanks for $5, Super Deluxe. I have no idea what you're talking about. Blunty, do you know what he's talking about? Nope. Okay. Well, it's good to know that Oh my God didn't sell out, at least as far as uh, Super Deluxe stands. Monkey DFPV. Thanks for a, we got a couple Super Chats trickling in. Uh, thanks for a $5 Super Chat. I have a Flywoo Analog Baby Nano 2S. I unlocked the VTX, but it's not staying unlocked. First time in setup showed Tramp in the ports tab. Any ideas? Well, uh, Monkey D, I think, I think that Tramp is correct for the na uh, Baby 2S. Hang on. I actually have a setup video. And I can double check that. Aha! I'm glad I made this setup video once upon a time. So where's the ports tab? Do I have any video of the ports tab? Arm mode, angle turtle beeper mode, configuration tab. Come on, baby. Analog video setup. Do we have anything from the ports tab? Uh, analog video. Okay, this will do. What can can we see? The VTX table. Here we go. Uh, yeah, Tramp is correct. Okay, just confirming. Tramp is correct. Well, Monkey D, when I got them, it was Tramp. I'm lucky that this is the analog one. Otherwise, this wouldn't have worked. Uh, Oscar Liang's post mentioned it was smart audio. Mine was Tramp and it worked. I don't know if it's changed, but I can tell you that my analog one from, you know, a few months ago, this was in seven months ago. Okay. That was a while. I don't, I'd be surprised if it changed, but, uh, it, it, here's the thing. Uh, if it's going into pit mode, it could be going into pit mode because you have the wrong VTX table loaded and that can cause some VTX to lock themselves into pit mode. Black Jungle 308, thanks for uh, 20 ray eyes. A quad with a hamster ball like frame and fully caged props for making sure I can navigate through super tight spaces. Sure, this is a thing people have done before. Unsticking it from places with launch mode makes sense instead of turtle. No. The point of launch mode is to pitch to a certain angle and stay there. I think you would want turtle mode or maybe 3D mode. I don't know. Adamos Anatolitis wants to know, can you let me know how to charge the Radio Master 6200 milliamp hour for Boxer? You put it in the Boxer and you plug in the USB port in the bottom of the Boxer. The Boxer has two USB ports. The one on top is for data. The one on bottom is for charging. It has a built-in charger. You don't need to take it out to charge it. Just plug USB, 
into and by the way, if you have a quick charger, it will it will fast charge. So it'll do high output, high voltage. That's how you charge that. Tom Ziboril wants to know, is there a simple way on the Tango 2 aux channels to program the momentary switches to switch between two values? Yes, absolutely. In fact, uh, I made a video about that. Tom Zboro, this is the video you want. Your trim switches are useless. Let's fix that. Um... This is the video you want, Tom, and it will tell you exactly how to do what you're trying to do. I cannot find you in the chat. Interesting. I don't know why I can't find you. Maybe you've left the chat. Uh, there is the video you want, though, Tom. Super Deluxe wants to know, why is it acceptable for manufacturers to make flight controllers that blow 5-volt rails in less than a week? That's not acceptable. Almost every high-end brand I've tried, flight controllers are so fragile, it's almost like it's on purpose. Um, so Super Deluxe, this is one of those times where if you didn't know me, you would think I was a real asshole. And if you do know me, you would know I'm a real asshole. Super Deluxe... Uh, You've blown the five volt rail on every high end flight controller you've bought. Maybe it's you. I don't know what. I don't know why. I don't know what it could be. But I do, I, I have not had that experience. I can't think of the last time I blew a five volt rail. Like I mean, I can think of the last time I killed a flight controller. But like, um, you buy a new flight controller, and in less than the week, the five volt rail died. That I, that experience does not seem common to me. And so since it's happening to you repeatedly with multiple manufacturers, just by sort of deductive reasoning, we have to wonder if like something about you is causing that. And I don't know what that would be. Like, what are you running off the 5-volt rail? Are you overdrawing the 5-volt rail somehow? 